Wi-Fi takes another step forward. I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Kevin Robinson, Senior Vice President of Marketing at the Wi-Fi Alliance. Welcome back, Kevin. Thanks. It's great to be here, Tanya. Remind us what the Wi-Fi Alliance is. So the Wi-Fi Alliance is the worldwide network of companies that brought you Wi-Fi. We're made up of more than 800 companies who really represent the who's who in the connectivity space, whether it's on you know, end product devices, you know, the Apples, the Googles, Samsung, Sony's, et cetera, all the way to service providers, the Comcast, BT, Orange, and everyone in between. And one of the most important things we do as an organization is we administer a program called Wi-Fi Certified which makes sure that your Wi-Fi devices work well together, regardless of vendor. And Wi-Fi certified really has been instrumental in making Wi-Fi the global phenomenon that it is, where we currently have approaching 13 billion Wi-Fi devices still in active use. So I'm waiting for the day that we actually hit two Wi-Fi devices for every man, woman, and child on the planet. So let's talk about the differences here, six gigahertz, Wi-Fi, and or, or Wi-Fi 6C, they, they've all been in the news lately. Start by clarifying the difference between Wi-Fi generations and the radio frequency spectrum on which they operate. Sure, so uh, a little while back, Wi-Fi Alliance took a, an entirely new approach to describing generations of Wi-Fi. So the approach is really very simple. It's a sequential numbering, Wi-Fi three, four, five, and six. But traditionally, those generations might have been referred to by their standards nomenclature. So if you've heard terms like the IEEE 802.11b specification or 11a, 11ac, 11ax, those would all be the generations or the standards under, un, underpinning Wi-Fi. But it's really quite a mouthful. So Wi-Fi Alliance has this new approach that makes it as simple as possible for the average user to determine whether their devices have the capabilities they're looking for. Now, when you're looking at each of those generations, they operate in one or more frequency bands. So in, in you know, the way back days with, with 11B, uh, you had 60 megahertz of spectrum in the 2.4 gigahertz band. You kind of fast forward to 11N, which operates in both the 2.4 and five gigahertz band. And now we have Wi-Fi 6, and going into Wi-Fi 6E that operates in 2.4, 5, and the 6 gigahertz band. Now, the great thing is most users haven't had to worry about it too much because the 2.4 gigahertz band really was the common denominator across all Wi-Fi devices. So devices would generally fall back to 2.4 gigahertz, which was, the, was a band in common. Now, moving forward with Wi-Fi 6E, it's gonna be important for users to know that their devices have those capabilities, which are really gonna deliver a number of great benefits. So then let's speak to that. What benefits does 6E offer? So Wi-Fi 6E delivers the same great capabilities and benefits that you get from Wi-Fi 6, but extended into the six gigahertz band. So with Wi-Fi 6, you get multi-gigabit connectivity, data rates approaching 10 gigabits per second. You get wider channels, uh, up to 160 megahertz uh, of, of channel space, which, which feeds into that performance. You also have the ability to serve a very wide, uh, an increasingly large number of devices and a diverse set of devices in a network or on a single access point and give them very deterministic behavior. So for example, you might have a sensor that doesn't send very much traffic, but it has very low latency requirements. Or maybe you have a laptop, a tablet, something of that nature that is sending a lot of data, but latency is not as much of an issue. With Wi-Fi 6, you're able to kind of tailor the service profiles of what each of those devices gets because of the capabilities it has. Now, Wi-Fi 6E, takes those capabilities and extends them into the six gigahertz band. And the unique aspects of six gigahertz are one, it gives you an incredible amount of spectrum. So think, you know, seven super wide channels. So those 160 megahertz channels, there's seven of them in the six gigahertz band. In addition, it's, it's less congested spectrum. 
So there's not, there are not as many devices operating in that band. So if you think about it with you and your neighbors, uh, you're each able to almost get your own, your own dedicated channel for high performance. So your own lane on the freeway, as opposed to having to share it with a bunch of other cars. Wi-Fi Passpoint has been around for a few years, at least in concept. Where does Passpoint fit into the puzzle? Passpoint is really uh, is, a, is a capability that's part of a really kind of a collection of capabilities we sometimes refer to as Wi-Fi Vantage, which deliver an elevated experience in a managed network environment. Passpoint specifically gives you a seamless in-pocket connectivity experience. And what that means is similar to with your cell phone, uh, when you, let's say, get off a plane in a different state or in a different country, you don't get out your cell phone and you know, pull up a connection manager and look for the cellular network, right? It's very seamless. Passpoint delivers that same capability for Wi-Fi networks. Passpoint is very widely adopted in devices. And in fact, if you've purchased a device in the last four to five years, I can almost guarantee that it has Passpoint included in that device. Uh, many, many U.S. service providers, uh, you know, at and and others leverage Passpoint very heavily. Now, what we're seeing increasingly is, um, is a push to increase the adoption of Passpoint in service provider networks and in other networks themselves. So you may have heard of initiatives like the Wireless Broadband Alliance's Open Roaming Initiative. Right, which really is just a, a federation of networks that allows seamless roaming and authentication across those networks. Um, another user of this, of this capability is, uh, for example, the Google Orion Wi-Fi project. Those are all related to Passpoint and related to open roaming out of the WBA. As 5G becomes widely available, how do you see that technology complementing or even competing with Wi-Fi 6E or beyond? Probably the, the most important thing for people to take away is that Wi-Fi 6 and 5G will be incredibly strong complements to one another. Cellular and Wi-Fi have been complements for years, and that is not going to change going forward. 2020 really cemented Wi-Fi's role as kind of a cornerstone of connectivity. I mean, if you look at the increase in, in data traffic going over Wi-Fi networks, it is really incredible. Uh, and, and I would also say that people's affinity for Wi-Fi is, is very personal. Um, I, ha I happen to be a veteran and you know, veterans health issues are something that are important to me. And during this pandemic, the VA is really kind of struggling. How do they provide care when people are having to isolate and quarantine? And so they're turning increasingly to virtual healthcare. So the VA, and this is a, this is a stat actually uh, FCC Chairman Pai was, was talking about, the VA, when you look at virtual uh, mental health visits are up 700% since the pandemic. You look at virtual uh, just primary care visits are up approaching 1200% during the pandemic. So Wi-Fi, you know, it's not just about entertainment. Wi-Fi delivers incredibly important benefits to society. Um, and also I would say that um, when you look at Wi-Fi as a technology, it has this unique combination of performance, very competitive price, and ubiquitous deployments indoors that make it an obvious choice for service providers, enterprises, and just everyday average consumers. Uh, it is not going away anytime soon. You can, you can believe that. Where should we go to keep up with the progress on 6E, Passpoint, and, and everything mm -hmm. Wi-Fi? Well, of course, we're, we're, uh, we're on a number of social channels, so you can follow us there. We're on uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn. And you can uh, finally, you can follow us on our website, which is wifi.org. Kevin Robinson, Senior Vice President of Marketing at the Wi-Fi Alliance. If somebody wants to connect with you personally, Kevin, how can they do that? Uh, your best way to connect with me personally is on LinkedIn. Sounds good. Thanks again for joining us. And find more of my interviews right here or at tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.